Hi there, I'm Brooke Baldwin, live here in Destin, Florida, where we are covering the official landfall of Hurricane Math uh, Michael, Hurricane Michael, uh, Category 5 hurricane with winds at 155 miles per hour. That is several miles per hour shy of Category 5. I am joined by two of my colleagues, uh, Erica Hill, who's with me here, not too far from where I'm standing in Destin, and also really who's feeling the brunt of it, John Berman, who is at Panama City Beach, Florida, just about 40 miles uh, to my east. John Berman, I'm going to send it straight to you. All right, Brooke, thanks so much. Panama City Beach feeling the full force now of Hurricane Michael. We have sustained winds here of 100 miles per hour or more, gusts of 120 miles an hour. The official landfall of Hurricane Michael happened about 40 miles east of where I am near Mexico Beach with winds of 155 miles per hour. As Brooke was saying, that's just two miles per hour short of being a Category 5 storm. When all is said and done, it may prove out that Hurricane Michael did make landfall as a Category 5 storm. You can feel the ferocity. I'm sorry, uh, I I'm walking around here very gingerly trying to make sure that there is no flying debris coming my way. Uh, people who have been watching for a few minutes know that behind me there used to be this metal railing, this, this iron railing that was cemented to the ground here. It was uprooted and bent over and pulled the cement with it. That's just how strong this wind is. And there goes another piece of the metal siding flying by here behind me. 100 mile an hour winds will do that. It will be sustained like this, we understand, for a full couple of hours. Panama City Beach, where I am, is the most populated area, feeling the full force of the storm. Some 12,000 people live in Panama City Beach. The city manager told me he estimates about half of those did leave, but that means there are several thousand people still trying to ride out this storm. Uh, I hope they are safe. I hope they are in a room in their house right now, not near the windows, because this wind is blowing very, very hard and will do so for some time. As I said, we did have an official landfall from Hurricane Michael a short time ago. Let's get the details on that. Jennifer Gray joins us from the Weather Center. Jennifer. John, yes, you are still in that eye wall. In fact, it's hard to believe that about 10 miles to your east, the clear skies and calm winds, but you are going to experience this eye wall in its entirety, and it's going to last probably another half hour for you, and then conditions will improve. There was a 130 mile per hour gust at the Air Force Base just to your east, and that is before the gauge broke. Uh, so most likely the winds were much, much higher. Of course, in Panama City Beach, we had a 116 mile per hour gust. You have sustained winds of 100 miles per hour, possibly even higher. This is the third lowest pressure of a storm as it's made landfall. That's how we measure the intensity of storms. We measure it by the pressure in millibars. We also measure by the winds. The pressure in this storm is so low, it's the third lowest or one of the strongest storms ever to make landfall. This is just behind uh, the Labor Day storm in the Keys, which was in 1935, and then Camille in 1969. So it just gives you perspective of how strong this storm actually is. The eye is on shore now, so that eye wall uh, will slowly start to um, weaken as it continue its track to the north. It's going to take some time, though, because the storm is so strong and it has so much momentum along with it. And it's going to continue to track on into southern Alabama as it, we go through the afternoon and evening, or southern Georgia rather, as we go through the afternoon and evening hours. And this will most likely be a category two at that time. So I don't want people uh, that the storm hasn't impacted yet to get be caught off guard with that because we are going to see a very powerful storm push very far inland. Uh, but the storm surge is not over, points to the east of that eye are experiencing six, seven, nine feet of storm surge in Apalachicola. We have a report of over eight feet of storm surge already, and that's just going to continue to rise over the next couple of hours. So, uh, John, for the next half hour or so, you are going to be in the brunt of it. And then as the storm lifts to your north, conditions will gradually start to improve. But be very, very careful, especially those trees around you and flying objects. Uh, you can't duck out of them fast enough. All right, promise, promise we will be careful here. Careful here, Jennifer, I'm sorry, my mouth not working too well uh, with the rain and the wind pounding it. Fascinating that this storm will be a Category 2 storm, even as it moves well inland where people may not be as ready 
as they are here. And I'm not even sure if people in Panama City Beach were quite ready for what's happening right here. The eye of the storm, as Jennifer said, passed east, a little bit east of where I'm standing right now. They got even worse than what we're getting here, and here is pretty bad. Let's go to Gary Tuckman, and I'm not sure I'm saying this right, but stop choppy floor to Gary. John, you are saying it correctly, stop choppy floor. And when we arrived in this little town, we've been driving all over, looking at what's going on east of where you are. When we arrived here, we had a temporarily frightening moment that turned comical. We thought we saw someone severely hurt in the street. It turns out it was this King Kong who was lying on the street, an advertisement for Sop Choppy Pizza, which is this building that was built in 1912 and has survived all these years. 1912, by the way, trivia, folks. Same year that Fenway Park was built. And the words is about to come here. We hope Sop Choppy Pizza does okay. But this is the town. About 470 people live here. We haven't seen anyone around. Almost everyone seems to have evacuated, which is very good news. This town, by the way, they have an annual, this is old Florida, and they have an annual worm charming festival, worm, W-O-R-M, where they use tools to coax worms up from the ground. They use the worms for bait, and they do that every year here in South Choppy, which is now going through the scare of this very strong Category 4 hurricane. Keep in mind, in the Florida Panhandle, in recorded weather history, there has never been a Category 4 hurricane, and we're just under Category 5. So this is something that even hardened Floridians who are used to hurricanes have never experienced before. As I told you, John, we've been driving all over. We started the day in Shell Point Beach, which is behind me to our south, right on the beach, and we had to get out of there very quickly because the water literally within five minutes started rising and coming towards us, and it was up to our knees, and we knew it would get much deeper, and we got out of there. We've also seen, as we've been driving around, a lot of transformer fires. Power lines have been coming out, and we just see fires on the side of the street, and they're not being put out because the fire officials aren't out right now. Everyone's taking care of their families and being careful and taking care of critical situations. So right now the situation is still scary. Near the coast, we think it's dire because the water is so deep and people are just waiting to see what happens to their homes and what happens to their livelihoods. John, back to you. All right, Gary, Tuckman in Soft Choppy, Florida. Gary, I didn't hear too much, but I heard you say Fenway Park. I put a smile on my face in this storm knowing that the Red Sox won last night in advance. We'll leave that aside. Gary was talking about the sound of transformer explosions. These hurricanes have sounds, the roar of the wind, which you can hear, but also the blasts as transformer after transformer blows. Uh, and that is when people lose power and lose power for some time. That is the expectation here. Uh, as Jennifer Gray was saying, we're getting winds north of 100 miles per hour, gusts of 120 miles per hour. Brian Todd, also in a different part of Panama City Beach. Brian, give us a sense of what you're feeling. John, some really ferocious wind hitting us right now, about a block inland from the uh, coastline. We had to move in a block just to get away from the storm surge on the beach because the beach where we were was just too dangerous. But look at this. This isn't too safe either. If you go down the street here, we can see these power lines shaking. That one over there looks like it's about to come down. We've heard transformers blow around here. As you mentioned that you've heard them blow, there are a couple of transformers here that are in real danger right now behind me as these trees are starting to contort. Check out over here to your right, my left. I'm going to refer over here. Look at the violence with which these uh, trees are being shaken. That one tree over there, a very sturdy tree, just snapped in half. This house here already starting to lose some shingles and is threatened by these pine trees, which could snap at any moment. They've really been bending and shaking in the wind right now. Uh, we mentioned that this came upon this area very quickly. Uh, 150 mile an hour winds, just two miles an hour shy of being a Category 5 when it hit landfall at Mexico Beach uh, just east of here. That is uh, not necessarily surprising in the context of today, but it is surprising overall for officials who said that they're just amazed at how quickly this storm gathered strength. We want to talk storm surge now, too, because that's one of the reasons we had to move in a block. Where we were earlier, right on the beach, the storm surge was at very dangerous levels. We pulled in a little bit now. We're going to try to move out in a little bit. Hold on. I might have to come a little bit in toward the camera just to get out of the danger here. There is debris flying all over the place. That's another thing you have to constantly look out for. I'm just under the lip of the uh, garage here, so I'm a little bit protected. But look at that. I mean, this the, we got palm fronds flying all over the place. place. I was just hit by some uh, debris from these trees over here. The storm surge could hit 11 to 13 feet, John. That means that these streets here could be flooded uh, very shortly. But uh, the uh, mayor of Panama City Beach and the city managers say that they are fairly confident that the, uh, that the levels here, that the elevation levels are fairly healthy. They think that they can withstand storm, the, the storm surge, but when it gets to 11 to 13 feet, as it might, 
uh, that's going to be a very a real challenge to try to, uh, you know, withstand some of that flooding, John. But again, very, very violent winds uh, just hitting us here a moment ago. And if you're out right now, you just cannot be. Every sheriff and every local official is telling people don't even step a couple of feet away from a solid structure. Yeah, stay inside and stay inside for a long time because even as this wind passes, which is showing no sign of passing anytime soon. It's going to be some time before the roads are safe and the debris is cleared, the power lines move, all of that to worry about in the coming hours as Hurricane Michael passes through here. Again, remember, no Category 4 storm has ever hit the Florida Panhandle, and this storm made landfall a short time ago with wind speeds of 155 miles per hour, just two miles per hour short of a Category 5 storm.